the final score, Wrexham 4, Barrow 1. And, well, they say that the Scots do New Year's best. Stephen Fletcher, I think it's just illustrated that. A sensational performance by him and a spectacular comeback by Wrexham in a genuinely remarkable game. And, you know, remarkable by Wrexham standards, which is saying something, isn't it? But, wow, Wrexham triumphing against a side that were 14 games unbeaten in the league coming into the match, had just come off a, a seven-match streak of wins, which ended with a draw against Stockport. You know, the Barrow are serious, but goodness me, that was quite something. Lots of strange stats and quirks coming out of it, but maybe most important, well, certainly most importantly, Wrexham getting a huge three points against our promotion rivals. And also, well, just, I think, again, illustrating that even when the chips are down, we can usually respond. Three changes in the Wrexham side from the team that lost at Walsall, but Barrow hits us with a sucker punch and we're ahead after 33 seconds, the last thing you could possibly want against a team with such a mean defence, best defence in the division. It was a sloppy goal to concede, in all honesty. Uh, it was ended up with Newby on the left-hand side, sweeping in an awkward cross. He had too much time to deliver it, in all honesty. Whitfield, back to goal, six yards out, couldn't control it, but it ricocheted off his torso and Kian Spence arrived on marks at the far post to put it past the completely exposed Arthur Oconquo. I mean, for me, when you first look at it, you, you think, OK, no one's tracked him. That's poor. And you start looking at Elliot Lee, who, you know, I guess really he would have been his man. Um, and maybe James McLean, the left wing back, who didn't cover, didn't see the danger coming. But to be fair... I mean, it was a very well-timed late run. Lee had already gone in picking up another run, so he was being diligent and doing his duty. And McLean, to be fair, had a player outside him who he had to keep an eye on, and maybe because of that spotted a bit late. But it was a sucker punch. 33 seconds, Wrexham were down. And although we did have an early opportunity to strike back, a quick throw in by Ford, picking out Cannon on the right, and he turned beautifully to beat two men, but then tried to beat the keeper at his near post, and the farmer got down well, low to his left to hold it. The truth of the matter is that Barrow imposed themselves in the early stages, and Wrexham looked in real trouble. Barrow were, as they did at Holker Street, when they looked like a work in progress, and didn't quite get it right, breaking quickly through Wrexham's midfield, and getting releasing players in and around the box, running into the channels, and causing issues. In the 11th minute came a horrible incident where their right-back Worrell, who was outstanding in that game at Holker Street earlier this season, sustained a nasty head injury, jumping. He made a very good defensive header at his far post. Cross came in and McLean and Mullin were both jumping for us and he got an accidental whack on the head. It was terrible. The game was stopped for 10 minutes. He was removed on the stretcher. Thankfully, he's OK. But, yeah, that was a... a a, a moment of well, a frightening moment, which also uh, led to that long pause, which can reset a game. And it did feel a bit different afterwards, but um, not decisively so. Wrexham started to calm down a little bit, started to move the ball around better, and started to have sustained spells of pressure. But Barrow defended their penalty area brilliantly. The midfield dropped off a bit deep. But between them and the, and the back five, they really, really stuck to their men. And Wrexham were finding it well nigh impossible to carve out opportunities. Still think that was the best way to go about it, trying to be patient. But like I said, the first half went Barrow's way until added time. Farman with a free kick up towards the edge of the area. It went into the area. Wrexham just couldn't get it clear. Free hit Wrexham defensive headers and it bounces around in the box till it comes out to Newby who smashes the ball on target from about 15 yards out. Big block by O'Connor to make sure that it didn't test the Conquo. Then it was White hitting a powerful 25-yarder. The Conquo did well to get to his right. Fumbled it a little bit, but it was okay. He was under control of it. He knew there was no one close enough to get a rebound and he picked up the loose ball comfortably. His lateral movement with those big legs, very good. And he made a, a difficult strike look like a, a simple one to say. We had 14 minutes of added time. And in the third of those, he had to come into action again. This time Whitfield in the right channel, spinning nicely and driving a shot across a Conquo. A Conquo saved it and held it comfortably. It's got to be said, if you didn't have those long arms, 
I don't think that would have been an easy save. Any other keeper, I think, might well have struggled. But Okonkwo was able to leap across and grab hold of it. Now, those added minutes were obviously crucial in the game. And Wrexham, incredibly, and for the first time in our history, would score three times in added, in added time. And it came from nowhere. And when you, you try to sort of quantify this and explain exactly what happened and why, I think the most obvious answer is Wrexham have terrific quality. And ultimately... <laughs> Even when you're on top of us, if you give us half chances, there's a danger that we will punish you. And I think that's exactly what happened. There was a moment of controversy, though, before those three goals went in. Uh, McLean going in very hard on Foley. Now, after the match, Pete Wilde suggested this was the first of two incidents which McLean should have been sent off for. So I've looked at it a lot of times, a lot of times, and I don't agree. I, for me, um, he's gone in very hard, not denying that at all. He does leave the ground for a moment at both feet, which is a bad sign. But he's, he's in control, I would say, by the time he gets to the ball. It's a very hard straight leg tackle. But Foley doesn't get there. In fact, the way Foley goes in looks a little bit worse, the way he's going in with his studs up, which McLean wasn't. And for me, I don't think it's a foul. I think the ref's wrong to book him, which is what he did. And I think Wilde... Uh, if he looks at it again and is honest, I think we'll have to admit that wasn't a bad tackle. There was contact with McLean's trailing leg, but I'd be very reluctant to describe it as a foul, in all honesty. It was a terrific hard tackle. There was another moment just before Wrexham's first goal, which could have changed everything. Aqua holding the ball up and helping it on to Foley, who drove into the box but drove the ball across the face of goal. But then the ninth minute of added time, Wrexham got there first, and it was a sweet goal. Nice patient build-up. Lee starting to drive forwards then, feeding it to Fletcher, cutting in from the left. He popped it to Mullen. Mullen always looking for those first-time layoffs back to Fletcher. Did a little back heel flick, which found Fletcher on the edge of the area. It was a difficult one to control. And I have look at this again and again. He controls it with his calf. It's just remarkable. It comes at an awkward height and he just drops it in front of him with his calf just to the right and his body shape going to the right. He then deceives the keeper by swivelling and driving the ball firmly into the bottom left corner. Farman can't re reset in time and Wrexham have equalised because of quality play. Two minutes later, Wrexham are ahead. A free kick given as Wrexham continue to pile on. Lee fouled on the, by the corner of the box, left-hand side. Mullen steps up and strokes it beautifully. On, uh, under the bar Farman diving gets a hand to it but only pushes it onto the underside of the bar and it's 2-0 to Wrexham the momentum now is terrific Wrexham roaring and tearing at Barrow and another two minutes later we get the third a corner by McLean Wilde mentioned that McLean he thought shouldn't have been on the pitch to deliver it swung to the far post Wrexham had lined up Toza was the barrier for Fletcher and Toza's marker ran into the box to follow O'Connor Fletcher's marker then stuck to Toza. They both made inwards runs towards the centre of the goal. Fletcher held back. He was unmarked. And it's ridiculous. He peels round the back to the far post. And he's completely unmarked. And plants a powerful header into the roof of the net. Wrexham, from nowhere, are 3-1 up. Three goals in four minutes and 42 sec seconds. Wow. Quite something. In fact, I was... I must admit, a bit annoyed at the end because the referee only added one minute onto the 14 he'd added for the unfortunate injury to Worrell, which I couldn't understand because Foley was treated for two minutes and 14 seconds. And I was the reason I was annoyed was because Wrexham had such ludicrous momentum and Barrow, such a great defensive unit, looked so shaken that I really felt another two minutes we might have got a fourth. Really felt that way that... Shift of momentum is remarkable. So Rexon going very happy. Now there's another moment of controversy in the 49th minute. And again, Wilde felt there should have been a red card for McLean. Uh, awkward bouncing ball spins between he and Lucas Stevenson. The sub who came on for Worrell. They both go in for the header. Stevenson gets there first. And it looks like to me his chin gets hit by McLean's shoulder. And he also, like Worrell, is knocked out and has to have a lengthy spell of treatment and is taken off on a stretcher. I've seen some 
not many, but some wild overreactions in that challenge as well on the social media. Again, I really don't think it's a foul. The ball, spat, there's a lot of backspin on the ball. It lands between them and bounces straight up in the air between them. And they both go in to win the ball. I think it's quite telling when you look at the barrel player's response that there's only one player who complains to the ref. Uh, all the other barrel players um just concerned for their teammates and, and don't go and harass the ref because I don't think anyone on the pitch really, apart from that one barrel player, thought it was a foul. And certainly looking at it, and rightly, the streaming company that films wrestling games haven't didn't put up a, a replay because it looked like it could be a serious injury. So rightly, they didn't put one up. So there's no second angle, but certainly for the, the main camera angle, it looks like a genuine attempt to play the ball and they both collide. So Stevenson sadly also stretched it off the game's changed now anyway, in all honesty. Wrexham are in comfortable control, and the second half is all Wrexham. Uh, just controlling play. No huge rush to score another, because the game feels won. 65th minute, the first chance of the half, really. Nice pass by McLean down the left-hand side to Mullen, who cuts inside. Maybe should have pulled it back to Fletcher, but to be fair to Mullen, he's Paul Mullen. He's got the right to choose what he's going to do in the box. And from a tight angle, he drove in a shot, which went just wide into the side netting. Two minutes later, though, definitely goes in the net. Lovely flowing move again by Wrexham. Anthony Ford has such quality when he's crossing. I know, goodness, we bought a bloke who's a beast in the air. Um, Fletcher finds a little pocket of space before the ball goes to Ford and is then trying to hold his line, looking back across, watching the offside. And even when James Chester drops back in, he's still able to leap over James Chester. I mean, he's a proper... I mean, I know he's old now, but so is Fletcher. But, I mean, James Chester was excellent, I thought, and is an experienced international defender with top-level experience. But Fletcher not only gets above him to win the header, he gets so much above him with his leap that he can head it down. Beautiful, perfect header from Ford's cross into the bottom right corner. No chance for Farman. 4-1 and a fair reflection of how the game was going. Wrexham almost immediately reacted with a double sub. Fletcher coming off for a massive round of applause. Sam Dolby coming on. And in the same one, Jacob Mendy made a final appearance before flying out for the African Cup of Nations, replacing McLean. Another standing ovation. James Jones came on to replace Cannon, who was equally well-received. And Wrexham late on nearly got a fifth. Lee cutting in from the left and hitting a fabulous, dipping, curling shot with his right foot, trying to rip it inside the far right post. Farman with a fabulous save. I mean, honestly, that ball was moving a lot. And if you look at the video, it moves very late too. But Farman with a really strong hand at full stretch, his top hand, he stretches across and he manages to get the ball clear. Outstanding goalkeeper. Lee soon afterwards is brought off. George Davis is brought on. And then Anthony Ford nearly gets a goal. Brilliant keeping by Farman in the 89th minute. Mendy with a whipped in cross at the far post. Ford lunging in, makes good contact. He's inside the six-yard box. Farman, to his credit, just hurls himself, makes himself as big as possible and tries to get in the way, and he does. And it bounces loose, and Ford, from about a yard out, wider the post, does well to get, drive another shot in on target. Farman, by this time, is trying to do anything to block this one, springs, and makes a remarkable double save with his back. <laughs> so he's made the first one by the hurling and hits his body, and then as he lands, he lunges, pirouettes, and it hits him square in the back and goes behind for the corner. Brilliant stuff by the keeper. Barrow had a late moment of hope. I say hope. There's not anything to bring from the game by now. Campbell, the substitute, linking with the other sub, Dom Telford. Nice return pass. Beautiful, beautiful weight on Telford's return ball for Campbell. Running in the left channel. Tightish angle. He drove it across a Conquo and hit the post and came flying straight back out before anybody could react. But it was Wrexham who would have the last say. Deep into injury time, Ford lashing in a 15-yarder, which was again well saved by Farman. A couple of subs came on. Interesting thing about this. Well, firstly, Mullen came off. It was seven minutes of added time played. And Ryan Barnett went up front for a three-minute cameo. And then in the final minutes of added time, Will Boyle came on for Tom O'Connor. And I must admit, we had a little bit of a panic in the press box until Andy Morell after the match pointed out the obvious. Because um, he was our sixth sub and we'd used four sub windows. And we were a little worried, oh my gosh, have we made a mistake here and we're going to get the points taken off us. Uh, Andy pointed out that 
the first Barrow substitution was a concussion substitution, which means they can have an extra sub. Ironically, they actually only named six subs, and we therefore are also allowed an additional substitute. So we didn't break the rules. Thank goodness for that. All is fine. Uh, also, uh, if you if you know better than this, if you can prove me wrong, please please do. Um, but looking up and with the support of Mike the ref, who sent a message suggesting this during the game. I had a look, and I think that's the EFL record for the most time added on in an EFL game. 28 minutes in total, because of those two sickening injuries. Um, I've found... about oh, No, sorry. It's 25, although the ref actually paid an extra minute, so it's 26, really. The, um, I've, I can't find any football league game anywhere near that. I found a League Cup game and an FA Cup game that go further, but not uh, an actual league game, ever, in... England and Wales. So, wow, that's quite something, isn't it? Let's look at those performances, shall we? Oconquo, huge credit to him because that first half, keeping it at 1 0 when Barrow were looking confident was crucial. And Oconquo made a couple of sharp saves, not, <clears throat> not like wonder saves, but not easy saves. And he was, it was important that he did that to keep us in the match. So, massive credit to him. He was looking to distribute quickly as well when we were under pressure. And as ever, was dominant in the air. Brilliant performance by Oconquo. The centre-backs well, did well. Max Clueth, I mean, hats off to the guy. Again, like teams so often do, they targeted him. This time it was Aqua, massive target man. And Clueth was strong enough to withstand him and did typically those uh, neat little nudges around to stick a foot forwards and just flick the ball away before it arrives at Aqua. Uh, he likes intercepting. And he was superb, Clueth, and got forwards a good effect as well. So, again, really showing his quality and promise. The other centre-backs, Tozer, again, is really in a good vein of form, and he looked very solid and strong. And on the left-hand side, again, Tom O'Connor, some lovely passing from him. Good, solid defending as well. Uh, we had to defend solidly and tightly after letting that early goal in, and we did so. The wing-backs, a Ford's quality player, isn't he? I mean, he got a number of good balls in. Barrow, who've got three massive quality centre-backs, so it was, maybe it wasn't a great day for crossing, you'd have thought, although we did score from two crosses, and Ford was the one who got that beauty in in the second half. But uh, yeah, class play from Ford. McLean, again, uh, absolutely remarkable presence on the left-hand side. Ferocious, but I would argue, sorry, Pete Wilde, on the right side of the rules. Um, and just again, just that driving will and desire to take us forwards, to win his individual battle, to deliver into the box. Beautiful corner for Mullins, uh, for Bengbaum, for Fletcher's second goal. Excellent all round performance. The midfield had to be defensive in the first half and were. George Evans was again solid, broke play up, comfortable on the ball. And then when we came into it more, the midfield really came alive and the ball was being passed through the thirds very smoothly. Elliot Lee was terrific, his work rate as ever. But it's not just his work rate, which I always bang on about. It's the fact that he's also astute enough to know where to go, what to do. You know, He doesn't just run around a lot. He drops off into good defensive areas. And then when he wins the ball, a number of times he was the, the spark that sped up our moves with little driving runs or lovely turns to beat a man and get forwards. You know, when you're playing a team that can pick up their men that well, a player like Lee who can beat his man is worth his weight in gold. And he really was the instigator of a lot of our good work. Cannon as well. And I, I would say, especially in the first half, when things were going difficultly for us, he was very tenacious winning the ball. He was he had that shot early on. He was a goal press, the right hand side. We had some nice combinations and he was at the heart of it. Another tidy, tigerish, not lionish performance by Cannon and then up front well I mean you know I, I'm, I'm eulogizing these players but look at up top Mullin excellent glorious free kick fabulous assist for Fletcher's goal could have scored more was buzzing around a constant menace as he always is and yet despite all the plaudits I'm handing out you know the Stephen Fletcher's man of the match he scored a hat-trick he scored an outstanding hat-trick the guy is class um it was exciting his first start at the race course and he bangs three goals in not a bad way to start things off, but what a magnificent performance. I mean, when we were struggling, he was dropping into midfield and winning balls and holding the ball up well, using it intelligently. But then once we got into the game and started delivering, <laughs> he delivered. Wow. 
What a game. What a remarkable occasion. Biggest crowd since the Boston match in 2007 because the temporary cop was allowed to be full. Yeah, that's a good way to start the year. Let's carry on like that, shall we? Could be a laugh. But the final score of Wrexham 4, Barrow 1. I'm Mark Griffiths from Wrexham AFC.